What is going on guys? I'm back with another ship building guide. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about the XS uh, freighter from Sator and I think from other game, uh, Star Wars games as well, but I've only known it, ever known it from uh, Sator. Uh, it is the smuggler main ship and uh, I really enjoyed the ship when I was playing the, uh, Sator myself and I really do like its aesthetic design and it's it's sim it's another freighter it's a sm another smuggler freighter like the millennium falcon and everybody loves the millennium falcon so i decided to make this ver variation of it because um it is one of my f other favorite ships i like almost every sh single ship in sator and um this one's one of my favorites um it was a little pain a little bit of a pain to put together I had to tweak it a lot but uh finally managed to to finally refine it enough to actually make it look good uh, getting that round kind of edge was a little difficult, but uh, no, it turned out really well, and uh, I have to be honest, it's quite beefy, and it's really fun to fly. Let's move on to the interior so, and see what it looks like. The first thing you see when you walk in is a cargo hold. Obviously, this is a smuggler ship. It's got to have a cargo hold. So it's at the bottom deck. It's the first thing you enter. Um, I'm currently using. It's currently a two by three uh, hab, uh, fitted right at the center of the bottom, uh, bottom deck. Afterwards, uh, it leads towards the bridge, which on the way is the uh, control station. Uh, I added this mainly because I had to add more crew because. Uh, I think the, the ship on its own is big enough to actually ha house a large enough crew. If I remember correctly, the ship ha has about, I think, eight crew slots, so plenty to work with. And here, just before reaching the bridge, is the computer core, where obviously it gives it more of that as a feel to control of the ship itself and everything like that. And here we reach the bridge. Um, I'm currently using, it is the Shroud, uh, one of the Shroud, uh, Eklund. Shroud, Eklund and Shroud? Shroud or Eklund? It's funny because I ship build a lot and I can't remember the names of these, uh, of all the companies that make these parts, but, um, it's the Shroud and Eklund one, uh, the smaller one. Uh, no, wait, no, no, I'm mistaken. This is actually the Hopetown one. Uh, the smaller one, not the Armstrong one, but the other, the other cockpit, the one that reaches from the bottom. Again, I'm terrible with remembering the names themselves, but I know every single part in the game, so at least there's that. Um, but yeah, I, use, I chose this one because uh, it it has a better ship. It has a better shape on the exterior that fits better with the frame of the ship itself, rather than the Shroud Eklund one that I was thinking of. Um, but uh, no, yeah. And then moving on from there, we go back to the cargo deck to reach the ladder, which will then bring us to the second floor or the second deck. The mid deck, no, the top deck in this case. There's only two floors. And then, from if you turn to your right, if you reach the engine room, the engine room is obviously for aesthetic, uh, just to give it more of a feel. Because as we all know in the Millennium Falcon, there's all those engine and pipes and stuff like that that Chewie and Han Solo uh, tinker with uh, underneath the floor and like in uh, what was it, New Hope. So yeah, so I added that. Then there's an armory. Uh, I thought that's a, it was uh, relevant to add one in because we're smugglers. We obviously need to get out of sticky situations, and the crew needs to equip their stuff somewhere. So I thought it would be pro uh, uh, understandable to have one. Here is the living quarters. Obviously, this is where the crew hangs out. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of this particular interior. I might change it up. But the exterior fits really well. This is the Shroud and Eklund one. Uh, this is a, also another two. This is a two by two, I believe. Right? Yeah, it's a two by two hab of the living quarters. And uh, no, it fits a lot well in the exterior, but the interior itself is not that great. But I used it. Yeah, it's mainly just so that people, the crew can sleep somewhere and stuff like that. Going back to the initial ladder. Uh, at the very top of the de uh, of the ship is just a storage room. It's mainly just to house uh, for the exterior. It has no real purpose. 
but I kind of like having it there just to think of it as the smuggler hole or something like that. All right, let's get straight into the build. Here we are with the initial build. So I decided to put everything on top of the uh, cargo hold there to, as a base. Um, I'm using the Fusor DC403 reactor. Uh, it's really good. Um, it's not the best, but um, I needed that specific shape and design because, again, it's one of those reactors with a case, which I prefer aesthetically over the open exposed uh, tanks. Um, and yeah. Um, and then I put the living quarters on top of the cargo hold with the engine um, to give it the initial shape of the of the center of the hull. And then I proceed to pow to put the strout caps on top. As you see out there, I just got a little confused with how I put it. Initially, when I created the ship, it had the whole the whole top of the ship was completely flat because I was using the Hope Town top caps. And it looked horrible, and it looked so weird. And also the ship was too small. And I managed to fix that by extending the ship. And it made it a lot better. Um, here I'm using the Apollo GV300 grav drive and two Supernova 2200 two, two um, to give it that uh, extra kick in terms of uh, thrust. Because originally in this design as well, it has two round engines and it fit for, and it fit really well. So uh, unfortunately, they can't be any closer. So I'm also using the the shielded car, the S uh, 10st hotter shielded cargo, and I'm hiding it underneath the structure, underneath that Deimos um, companionway, and it fits really well because it's supposed to be. Uh, a shielded cargo hidden and everything like that from the authorities, right? So it fits really well with the structure. Uh, I then proceed to add the two supernova engines to the attaching to the grav drive. Here, the SA4330 engines didn't fit uh, with the structure, so I needed to do two things. Either you snap them, or you find another method that I found, which is to um, flip them uh, and then just dropping them. But for some reason on the left side, it didn't want to play nice, so it kept falling down and I couldn't figure out why because the right side snapped on perfectly just by rotating it. So I eventually pulled it away and it still did it. And then I did the snapping thing and my snapping, well, not mine, but just a snapping technique that I discovered and it managed to finally get on. So yeah, if you have that issue, you have those two methods by flipping and then releasing. And it should automatically just leave on its, just, it should just stay there. Or you do the snapping technique, which I do did in my previous videos. Um, I used the shroud caps uh, on the side there uh, because it has, it's one of the few flat piece, short flat pieces that has a sort of round edge and that actually somehow managed to f properly fit with the ship. Um, thankfully, unfortunately, they don't flip forward, which is a real shame. Um, but no, they fit really well in terms of the rear. So thank God for that. Um, I put the uh, docker on the side like it is in the actual design. It's also supposed to be right on top of the, la uh, the landing bay, uh, which fits also really well because uh, the landing bays are usually particularly from the side when it comes to these Corallian kind of freighters normally uh yeah i am using the ng20 landing gears for two reasons one they look really cool they're singles single legs and two i think uh out of all the landing gear they have the most thrust so the more uh the more thrust a landing gear has the less you have to put on your ship that's how i understand it and i only need four and in terms of the overall design to fit with the ship, it actually fits really well, and I really do like them. The only thing that was that's a pain in the ass is that it took me forever to find out where they came from, and I always had to go to um, uh, what is it? I think it's uh, New Homestead to go get them, 
and I never go out that way, so. But, uh, but they are worth it. They are really good. Uh, I do, so in terms of my weapon placement, I did, use, I'm currently using four uh, uh, turrets. Uh, two at the back, two facing the back, and then two facing the front. Uh, that way, from the rear, I have some kind of, like, uh, offensive, which helps really well. I am using the Galleon as well, uh, Galleon uh, S203 cargo holds. It's uh, it's really heavy, um, but it does give a lot of um, cargo all at once. And despite that, it's um, the ship itself because it's a, it's a smuggling ship. It's not a it's not a cargo. Uh, it's not really a, a massive cargo ship, you know, so it doesn't need that much cargo in terms of actual practicality. And again, cargo holes are really heavy, and I did want to make the ship somewhat fast so that it can actually get away out of sticky situations. So having not as many cargo worked out really well. So here I begin to build the uh, left wing. Um, I do particularly like this wing uh, because it's uh, it's only on one side, and I really like uh, asymmetrical designs. Um, to make this all fit uh, requires uh, two simple steps. Uh, first, you got to place the uh, Deimos spine on top. Uh, then you want to just place the um, skags underneath the entire the entire part of the wing. Uh, move that together like that. You then want to put the second keg uh, skeg underneath. And then you also want to put the skeg A uh, at the tip. Uh, I moved that too soon. Oh wait, no, I didn't. I need You need to put the spine first and then the skeg. So then what you're going to need to do is then clip the nose, the stroud nose cap, with the demo spine and skegs and what you do is flip it and then it should just and then just release it and it should stay in place and then you can click on it again just to see that it's green and then just be sure that it's placed but it should work either way after that the wing is basically done you just need to then select everything and snap it over to the wing just uh, make sure that the uh, hope tech hope tech top caps uh a line and then you're good so that is basically the entire body and the wing done now we just need to make the spine and the bridge so here i'm using the overseer 400 bridge from hotec and then i put a taos anything anything taos doesn't matter what room it is because actually that t that entire hab up there is purely for structure you cannot access it the reason why is because that Deimos uh, bracer that's behind the bridge wasn't uh, was placed there because that I had a companion way there before, and the ladder setup that this that the game put together with this with this entire layout was horrible. It made no sense. It was like going from the bottom deck up, back down, then back up. I'm like, no, there's no way I'm doing this. And I swapped it out for a bracer. I, it sacrifices a hab, but better that than uh, have an entire maze to run with. So here, I found a design online. Uh, I don't think it's I don't think it's a hundred percent thing. I think it's just a fan made thing. But essentially, it gives you the opportunity. Well, it doesn't give you the opportunity, but it shows another design of the ship, but a more symmetrical version of it with the wing on both sides. So I figured why not include that as well for those of you who like a, a symmetrical shaped ships rather than asymmetrical like I do. And don't get me wrong, I've I've tried it with the with the two wings and it was great. So the only downfall with the wing here is that you can't put um a specific uh, you can't put a spine a skeg underneath the docker so you're going to need to replace it with a hab. And then you're going to have to put the docker on top of the Deimos um, companionway that's in front of the Ugar uh, Oser uh, reactor. 
So you see here, I tried to put the docker there, but it wasn't, it, I knew it wouldn't work. Um, so then I needed to put a companion way instead. Unfortunately, that's a sacrifice um, to the design, which really buzz, bugs me because I do like having the docker right there on the side. Uh, and I really don't like having it on top. You could also put it on the bottom. That is entirely your choice. Um, so, but me, I like the asymmetrical version, so I'm using only one-sided wings. See, uh, so yeah, that skeg that I would have placed right there, that wouldn't have worked with the docker because the docker for some unknown stupid reason doesn't have a snapping point underneath it again who knows what bethesda was thinking so too bad so sad hopefully they'll change that in the future but uh for now uh that's how it is so there the teo cap was um was blocking the way of the nose cap of the uh of stroud uh, so I had to replace it. And by putting the companion way anyway, it matches better with the other side. Yeah, for some reason it didn't snap properly, so thankfully it just went above and then I clicked it again and boom, it just snapped in place. It is doable. If you're struggling, just move things around until it snaps together. So that's basically it of the build. Um, there is one thing I did want to try, which was to add the docker on top. So I, I didn't know which one to pick at first. I wanted to use a slim dogger, but then I thought, eh, it didn't really fit with the design. So I went with the extender port instead and obviously changed the color. And it's not too bad. Again, you can go underneath with the slim dogger, but it's entirely your choice. I prefer the, uh, I prefer the, uh, the asymmetrical shape. So here I, I wanted to change it up a little bit on top. This is entirely up to you as well. I don't, I don't personally do it. And that was to add a, uh, a bracer on top, just to give it a little bit more of a shape rather than just having it completely flat. Like the, the ship itself does have a small, very thin spine that goes from the, from the, the nose all the way down to the back to the center. But we don't have anything that small. So I tried using the I tried doing this with this with the current demo spines that we've got. It's not too bad, honestly. Like you could uh you could make it work. Um But I do like the flatness some a little bit, but again it's entirely up to you how you want to decorate your own version of this. Um this is just my opinion, like how I see it. I thought that at having the both spines spines like that would fit better than the other one and that's basically uh the entire ship so you can have either the symmetrical or asymmetrical version they're both really great and um the ship itself is really tanky with the with the guns that i'm currently using um there is an entire there is the entire list of all the parts down below so because i don't remember exactly what guns i'm using but um that's the entire ship and it was really fun to build really pain in the ass at the beginning but it worked out really well. And it's um, one of, honestly, it's one of my favorite builds. Again, it's second to the ghost. This is probably my second favorite. It's really fun. And um, it really gives me that smuggler feeling. And it has good shielded cargo, so it's really good in terms of the, the contraband stuff. So I really like it. I use this, uh, I use this mainly during my second playthrough. But now, Let's, let's see what she looks like in combat, because this thing is one hell of a ride.
All right, that's the end of the video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this build. If you did, give it a thumbs up down below. If you also have any suggestions or anything you'd like me to build next, throw it in the comments. I will add it to my list and see what I can do. And until then, I'll see you in the skies, and I hope you have a good one.